Hi, we are Haskin School of Business Accounting students and we are going to be applying the concepts of accounting theory and practice to the ideas of Lee Smolin and string theory and we are going to blow your mind. Man, this accounting theory stuff is killing me. I'm so confused. I mean, this stuff is really out there. I haven't seen a debit or credit since I can remember. I just, I mean, accountants, we like to be practical. This theoretical stuff, it's really hard for me to wrap my head around. You think you're confused? This stuff is string theory. It's the most ridiculously over-the-top, unsupported, stupid theory in the world. I mean, they started by trying to explain the spin two state of a graviton on a boson with a 26-dimensional bosonic string, and then... Well, they didn't like a tachyon, they didn't like the fact that it didn't have fermions, so they started trying to work out a symmetric superconformal symmetry on their world sheet, and then they added the fermions to it, and they got it down to an 11-dimensional matrix, but even an 11-dimensional matrix is just ridiculous. So finally we end up with this equation after we've instituted the time-space spinors into the fermion equation, and this is basically the simplified form of the current state of string theory. Sorry, man. I didn't follow that at all. Would you mind maybe dumbing that down for me a little bit? I think I can explain that, but I'm going to require a piece of string. String has one dimension. It's length. How long it is, it can be short, it can be long, but you can really only express it in one dimension. Where that dimension is can be expressed in a two-dimensional plane, as, uh, as if it's on a wall or something, or it can be expressed in a three-dimensional plane if it's aligned at an angle. You can mathematically express the position of a one-dimensional string in any number of dimensions. 5, 10, 11, 26. And this is what string theory does. It defines the entire universe in the shapes of extraordinarily small strings. And all energy states are either a matter of them, the string itself moving up and down, or a pulse traveling along the string. But these strings are so tiny, 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, that we can't possibly perceive them. But according to string theory, the entire universe is made up of this tiny object. Excuse me for saying so, but this stuff seems a little bit wacky to me. Where does it stand exactly in the physics world right now, and what are the other alternatives that are being considered? Actually, it is the dominant, um, it's the dominant paradigm. If you want to get funded and do research in the universities these days, by and large, you're researching string theory. The only other fields are like, um, Loop quantum gravity, which is found by the relativists, followers of Albert Einstein. You know what? This sounds a lot like the accounting world. Accounting is, accounting is dominated by two particular theories. Mm -hmm. One of them, positive accounting theory, or PAT, and the other one, CMR. And they're both somewhat related, although the ends and the way that they seek to develop their research is a little bit different. But basically, in essence, both theories revolve around the Chicago School of Economics and the rational actor theory and efficient market hypotheses. And so both of these dominant accounting paradigms are founded on those assumptions. The problem is that it's been largely proven that the efficient market hypothesis is not valid. At very best, the market could be semi-strong efficient, if that. And in addition, the rational actor theory seems just absurd, because I don't know about you, but I've acted in irrational manners very often in my life, and I think that it's quite a stretch to think that everyone in the market is thinking rationally. But at the same time, this is where the accounting world stands. So it seems like we're both looking at kind of wild and wacky things in the world, but not really being able to come up with any actual physical knowledge. Theory, practice, theory, practice. I thought that theory was designed in order to improve practice and make it more efficient, more economical, more tangible, something. But in the accounting world, it seems that theory and practice are on two different sides of the fences and really have no desire to meet in the middle at all. Is it like this in the physics world at all? 
I wonder what Albert Einstein would think about this situation and how he'd make out in the accounting world. Hmm. Good morning. Oh, Scheiße. Wunderbar! Ah, Jerika! Ah. What's all the commotion in here, Albert? So sorry, sir. The, the financial statements you uh, request to, requested to have on your desk uh, this morning, I was reviewing them and they, they don't seem to. Uh, reflect the, the economic uh, reality of the company. So I spent the last few nights uh, working out a new uh, accounting theory that I think will uh, uh, better reflect the economic reality of the company. Here, take a look at these new numbers, sir. Uh, Albert, this, uh, this isn't what I'm paying you to do. We, had, uh, we, we have a net, a net loss of 10000 here. And we were projected to have a $200,000 gain. But this, 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 this theory is, is incorrect. I, I, I worked on a better theory. I don't, I don't need a better theory. I need the status quo, Albert. I need, I need what we were doing before. I, I, can't, I can't function with this loss. You see, Albert, what we have here with you is a mountain climber. We don't need that here at Profit Corp. We're looking for hill climbers. Guys that go up and down, up and down, they do the status quo. That's what we need. Sure, you're up here, but we see potential in you over here. This, this valley cross, we don't want this. This is a dark mountain shrouded in fear. We don't need that here, Albert. We need these hill climbers. John across the, across the hall here, he's been working with us for 30 years. He does what we want, and that's what we pay him for. I do see potential, but I need you here, Albert. I need you here. This is the thank you I get for developing a new theory that could potentially change the whole world of accounting? I quit. I knew I should have taken that job developing the theory of relativity. You have potential here at Profit Corp. Hey, hey, you here? Oh, sorry man, I must have dozed off there for a minute. I just was thinking about Einstein and accounting. Einstein doing accounting? That would never work. Yeah, tell me about it. Let's go grab a beer. Yep.